EV Revolution show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bokor, your host for, finally, a news story. A news episode, I should say. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I've been so busy with car reviews and event coverage that uh, kind of just tweet the news out instead of reporting on it from time to time. So hopefully you're able to keep up and please follow me on Twitter because that's my main source for getting information out. I'm on there almost daily. So there's a lot of stuff that I don't talk about on these shows that I'll mention on Twitter or report on and uh, link through. So thanks for taking the time. I've got just a couple stories that I thought are important to jump on while I have this gap between cars and between traveling. So thank you for joining me. Sit back and listen and let me get right into it. First story I want to look at is plug-in sales year to date at the first half of 2022. The numbers are finally out so we can have a look back to see how the market is tracking. Now as of the end of June this year, Plug-in light-duty vehicle global sales are at about 4.1 million, almost 4.2 million units. Now that equals about 12% of the light-duty vehicle marketplace globally, which is tracking up from 2021's number of 8.5% of a final number that we did last year. So we're tracking up, that's good. Now about 75%, which is consistent of global plug-in sales, are battery all-electric EVs, with the remainder, of course, being plug-in hybrid EVs. Now this is good news for a marketplace that is having a hard time in making customer deliveries, along with most other products, of course, due to supply chain shortages and the major OEMs ramping up scale for battery needs and manufacturing. Now if this number holds... That would be about a 44% growth rate year over year from 2021. We will see, though, as that would mean about an 8.5 to 9 million total number for this year, which would be up from 6.5 million units or plugins, the whole total which happened last year. Now, let me talk about some of the top five brands, of course, in the plug-in registrations for the first half. BYD is number one when you look at all the plugins with just over 640,000 units or 15% uh, of the market share. Slightly under is Tesla with about 564, almost 565,000 units and just over 13% of market share. SAIC, which includes the SAIC a GM Wuling partnership, which of course includes the Wuling Mini EV, which is a big component to that, did about 358,000 units, and uh, it's about 8.6% of the market share. In fourth place is Volkswagen Group. They've uh, produced over 331,000 plug-in vehicles so far in the first half of this year, which is about an 8% uh, global share. And finally, number five is the Geely Volvo Organization Group uh, companies to come up. Uh, they've done over 231,000 units, about 5.6% market share. And it's good to see Geely uh, Geely, Volvo gaining some momentum. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, if we look at those numbers just and break down the all-electric registrations in the first half, Tesla does lead that category with, again, the same number, 560, over 564,000, uh, with a 19% market share in the all-electric. BYD is second, though, with 326,000 and change at 11% share. That SAIC organization is at 321,000 and change at almost 11% share. Volkswagen Group is 216,000 at a 7.3% share. And HMC or Hyundai Motor Group, and you've heard me uh, review a lot of Hyundai vehicles lately, they've done 167,305 uh, all-electric cars so far this year, the first half of this year, which is about a 5.6 market share. So in a year that's seeing some up and downs in different marketplaces, it is great to see that the upward trend continues as EVs slowly chip away at the overall ICE fee light duty vehicle marketplace, which is estimated this year to be around 67 to 70 million units. 
uh, globally. Now, it's also great to see more and more choice, as I keep saying over and over again, coming to consumers for EVs, which of course helps um, spur EV adoption and helps to continue the market growth. My next story is talking about partnerships going on in the OEM marketplace with countries. And this one specifically is Canada, because earlier this week, two major auto manufacturers, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen, announced intentions to partner with levels of Canadian government and industry in order to help meet mid- and long-term EV growth plans. Both of these manufacturers signed what are called Memorandums of Understanding, or MOUs, with the Government of Canada in order to strengthen cooperation across the electric vehicle value chain, which includes natural resources uh, development and securing raw materials. They both want to advance Canada's EV supply chain with an emphasis on mid- and downstream mining and refining segments, precursor cathode active material segments, cathode active materials, and in overall battery cell manufacturing. Now, neither company announced any plans to build a cell plant in Canada. However, VW currently has six battery plants and is looking to build another one in North America. And Canada is not ruled out as a possible location. Now, currently, 95% of all EV battery cell production is coming from Asia. So driven by market and consumer demand, as well as the newly inked Inflation Reduction Act from U.S. President Biden and his administration, the need to further secure local or North American supply chains are very important to growth. Canada specifically is a green supplier. It is one of the few countries in the world to have all minerals needed for EVs. Canada also has a large talent pool, a well-established system for the auto industry via Windsor, Detroit, an abundance of renewable energy for manufacturing, and access to large markets via the USMCA and TPP agreements. Canada is also investing heavily on the growing market of EV batteries recycling to close off the total life cycle. Now, earlier this week, I sat in on a media briefing from VW, where top execs from VW joined Canada's Federal Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology, sorry, and Industry, the Honorable Francois-Philippe Champagne, and they offered further details on the MOU from VW. Mentioned at this briefing was VW's goal of hitting a production level of 7,000 EVs per month by the end of Q4 of this year at the Chattanooga, Tennessee plant in the U.S. A further goal of 90,000 EVs annually is to be built there starting in 2023. So all of these are for the North American marketplace. VW also stated that they would open a local Canadian office of PowerCore, or Power Company, which is Volkswagen's newly formed battery company. Now, to help EV adoption growth, the Canadian government continues investments in EV charging infrastructure, consumer purchase incentives, and has set EV targets of achieving 100% zero emission vehicles, or ZEV, sales by 2035. And finally, my last story about California leading the EV revolution. You know, staying on the topic of EV growth and the ZEV targets, California has just announced this week that it plans to ban the sale of internal combustion engine vehicles by 2035. Now, this decision by CARB is to prohibit the sale of cars, SUVs, and light trucks with internal combustion engines starting on January 1st, 2035. The rule also sets interim targets that require 35% of new passenger vehicles sold by 2026 to have zero emissions, and the target ratchets up to 68% by 2030. CARB, or the California Air Resources Board, was created in 1967 to address the pollution from cars and trucks. And since then, it has been a leader in promoting more fuel-efficient vehicles with lower emissions. You know, one could say that the Toyota Prius exists because of the policies put in place by CARB. Now, while automakers have often resisted those regulations, 
California's new car market is the largest in the U.S., at about 2 million units a year, which, quite frankly, is larger than Canada's market and many other countries. Today, 14 U.S. states are committed to following the emission standards set by CARB, and together they make up about a third of all new car sales in America, which is about 5 million out of an average total U.S. market size of about 15 million light-duty vehicles per year. Now, regardless, California joins a current list of 31 nations, states, and cities that have proposed to ban the sale of cars and trucks with internal combustion engines between 2025 and 2050. So we'll have to see how these bans really work. Now, in fact, such bans may not even be necessary. For instance, Volkswagen has decided to stop selling passenger cars with internal combustion engines in Norway two full years sooner than required by that country's policies. So the free market is doing what policymakers want even sooner than the rule and regulations mandate. I hope this continues. So look folks, the transition to electric vehicles will be messy and not everyone will be happy about it. I would advise all to just deal with it and get over it. Because the reality is the world is on fire, from the Arctic to the Antarctica. If we don't act decisively now, not 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, most of us won't be around to act at all in the short foreseeable future. The danger is great and the time to end the use of fossil fuels as much as we can is now. Hence why I'm always talking that EV adoption needs to grow faster and OEMs need to spin up EV production even faster in order to use the time that we have wisely. And this is the main reason why I do what I do. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, where, as I mentioned, I do what I do, trying to educate minds one tail pop at a time and make a difference where I can. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Hopefully you'll watch some of my other shows and get some good education and awareness about EVs that I try to promote. If you are a Patreon supporter, I am always humbled and truly thankful for everybody that helps me out via Patreon. If you're interested to find out more, you can check out the link below. And As I've been doing for the last several episodes, I've been marketing the fact that I will be going down to San Diego in a couple of weeks, at about two weeks now, to join the crew at Fully Charged Live Conference, where I will be hosting a panel on Saturday and participating in one on Sunday. And of course, meeting lots of people, saying hi, hearing their stories and sharing their experiences. If you want to get tickets, you can use the coupon code or even better, I've just snagged a bunch of free tickets from Fully Charge. They sent me a coupon code for that. So if you're interested in getting a free ticket for that event, please, it could be a weekend pass too, email me at my email, which is coming up in the contact information at the end of the show. Send me an email and I'll send you the code so you can get a free ticket. So I'd love to see a lot of my viewers out there. Again, thanks for watching the show. Continue to follow the EV marketplace and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.